Welcome to The Painting Coach. In this video, we're going to be painting Usheran, the Mortak of Delusion for the Flesh Eater Court. This is a fantastic centerpiece model. I'm really happy with how this has turned out. We're going to be using a few more advanced techniques than perhaps we normally do, but don't worry, I'm going to break them all down into simple steps for you. This video will be a little bit longer than normal because it's such a fantastic centerpiece. We want to make sure that we get it absolutely spot on. A huge thank you to Games Workshop for sending me this model early so I can create this content for you. Let's get painting. Usharan is a fairly complex model, so I've left him in sub-assemblies, seven total, and I've primed them all with Chaos Black Spray. And the reason that I've put him into seven sub-assemblies is because there's lots of awkward bits and pieces to reach, and also it's going to be so much easier to do it this way, so you don't have to worry about messing up anything you've already finished. The first thing I'm going to do, which is rather unusual for a model, is I'm going to paint most of the base first, and I'm going to use carrot stone first. I'm using a nice big soft brush, so I can just throw it on there. Now, the reason I'm doing the base first is because part of Usheran's cloak has also got the base elements on it, so there's all these rocky bits on there that we need to get painted first. Now, it's easier to do it now and get it done than it is to try and do a lot of dry brushing once we finish the red on the cloak, so that's why we're going to do the base first. Not all of it, just enough to get us to the next step. Once we've got a nice even coverage of Carrick Stone all over the base, we're now going to take some Space Wolves Grey Contrast Paint and paint this all over the stonework, making sure it goes into the recesses. Now one thing I'm going to do with this is when I put it on the model, you can see it's quite dark, so what I'm going to do is clean my brush off, dip it into some contrast medium, and paint this into the Space Wolves Grey Contrast Paint. Now this is going to thin it out on the model, and it's going to help you spread it and make you go a little bit further along there before you have to go back in with your brush. It also means that it's not so dark. So when it comes to the next highlighting stages, it's going to be a little bit quicker. When that's completely dry, we're then going to go back in with Carrick Stone, again using a nice soft makeup brush, and we're going to just dry brush all over the stonework. Taking our time, we don't want to go too heavily. It's always better to start off with a little and then add more later on if we need to. Next up, we'll take some grey sear, and I'm using a much stiffer brush for this because I want to focus this around the edges. So just work your way across the model, hitting those sharp edges on the edge of the blocks. They're not really that sharp, they're quite worn, but they'll, they'll pick the paint up really nicely. So just work your way around getting that done, and we're starting to lighten up the base now. The final stage on the base for now is to just highlight those edges completely, and we're going to use some white paint for this. I'm using the same brush as the last step. It's not clean. The grey sea is still in there, so it will mix in a little bit. And we're just going to focus this on the edges. And this is a really nice, easy way to catch them and get a nice, crisp-ish highlight, which kind of just ties in nicely with the worn nature of all the block work. We'll leave the base for now and get on to the main model. So for all of the fur, we're going to take that nice, thick, soft makeup brush, and we're going to take some Skaven Blight Dinge. We're going to overbrush all of the fur. Now what this means is we're not taking too much paint off the brush, we still want the paint to be quite wet, and we're just going to paint over all of the area, particularly all of those little bits of leathery skin. I'm then going to take Storm Vermin Fur and do exactly the same. And you can see this is really starting to brighten up the fur, and this is giving you a nice warm grey look to the fur itself. So just work your way around and get this on there. And again, pay particular attention to all of that leathery skin, because this is going to be the base colour for that. The last highlight I'm going to do on the fur for now is with Dawnstone. And you can see I've swapped to a much firmer bristle brush, which is easy for you to say. And the reason I've done this is because it'll easily catch those sharper edges. Because I'm not doing the whole of the fur now. I'm just really focusing along those bits that are right on the extremities, right on the edge. And that's a really nice way of giving a nice crisp highlight. Now... This is going to be looking quite bright at the moment. It's time that we start to think about dulling it down. To do that, I'm going to take some Nuln Oil and paint this all over the fur. Absolutely everything. Now you see I'm using a fairly large soft brush for this. I'm not too concerned about it pooling too much. The only areas I will be worried about that is around some of that leathery flesh, which we want to keep that lighter grey colour so we can build up onto it later. This is a fairly easy step. You just need to make sure it's completely dry before we get on to the next step. I wanted to introduce some additional colours to the fur, so I'm going to go with a brown. 
Now, the color I'm using for this is Saigo Brown Contrast Paint, which is quite powerful. I didn't realize how powerful this was. So whilst I'm painting it on there, it is going on fairly opaque. So to keep the highlighted from underneath, I need to clean my brush off and just wick away some of that Saigo Brown along the raised areas just to keep the fur there. Now, this is entirely optional. You don't have to use Saigo Brown. You can use any other brown color. I'm probably just going to highlight it up with a little bit of scrag brown as well, which I'm probably not going to show on camera, but I just need to give it a little bit of, a, of, of help because it's a bit more powerful than I thought it was going to be. It's now time to build up that texture on all of that leathery skin. And the color I'm going to use for this is Storm Vermin Fur. So what I'm going to do is get a little bit on my brush, make sure I've got a decent tip, and I'm just going to paint scratchy lines all over this. I'm going to catch those sharp edges by dragging the tip of the brush along them to get a nice crisp highlight. But generally, I just want to add texture, so lines, dots, scratches, all these kinds of things, just in the areas that are going to catch the most light. To continue building that highlight up, I'm going to mix a little bit of Rakarth Flesh into the Storm Vermin Fur, and I'm going to continue to build up those dots, lines, and scratches, but I'm focusing on getting them inside the previous layer of Storm Vermin Fur. Now, the reason I'm using mixes here, I am going to use quite a few mixes across the tutorial, is to just make sure that that blend is as smooth as it possibly can be. Now, obviously, we're not blending too much here. We're just looking to build that texture, but we don't want it to be too stark on the mod. Finally, we'll take some Rakar Flesh on its own. Again, the key is to get a good tip on your brush, and we're just going to drag this along the sharp edges of that leathery flesh. And this is going to give us a really, really nice effect. When you look at it all together, it's nice and textured. It looks old and worn and decayed and dry. It's a really nice leather effect. We'll move on to Usheran's cloak next. And this is a major feature of the model. So we are going to spend a bit of time and we are going to use some mixes. And we are going to layer up a little bit more than we perhaps usually would as well. The first thing we're going to do is base all of the red areas. So it's the cloak as well as his loincloth and we're gonna use a one-to-one -one mix of black and corn red. Now I'm using AK black, you use whatever black you want to. And all we're gonna do is paint all of the cloak with this mix. So we wanna make sure we've got a nice even coverage. Once the first coat goes on, it might not cover completely, so we'll need to put a second one on. The first highlight we'll do is with pure corn red, and we want to paint this over all of the raised areas, leaving that darker color in the recesses. Now we are going to paint a good amount of the cloak in this step. The key is to just get all of it done. Don't worry about building those layers up so they're opaque just yet. What we want to do is get that first coat down, focusing on the raised folds so that we're going to catch the most light. We'll then come back in and have a little look at how it, the model has dried. And that'll start to give us a little bit of an indication of how we're going to build these transitions. Now you can see that that first coat has dried and it's not completely opaque. And that's absolutely fine. What we want to do when we add the second coat is just focus it again a little bit more on those more raised areas. So what this does is it helps build the color up in those areas. More importantly, perhaps, it leaves the transition area between the darker color and the corn red with that slightly more corn red color in there, but it's not a fully opaque corn red color. And because of that, you get that nice transition and it looks quite nice, especially when you build up and get that opaque layer of corn red down. So again, work your way up. If you're not sure, just fast forward to the end of this part, come back so you can see how I've done it and the areas I've picked. You can also have a look at the box art and see how they have uh, created the effect on the cloak, making that transition nice and smooth. Like I said, this is a huge part of the model, so it's worth taking our time. So I'm really happy with how these base coats are turning out. Let's start highlighting. So the first highlight we're going to do is a 50-50 mix of Corn Red and Evil Sun Scarlet. So this is going to start to increase the value, increase the brightness of the cloak. Now, because we're using a 50-50 mix of Corn Red and Evil Sun Scarlet, the color value isn't going to be hugely different, which again helps aid that blend. We'll also see that it's not covering perfectly well in one coat, and that's fine because remember in the last stage, we were okay with that because it helped us with the transition. It's going to be exactly the same here. Once that paint has had time to dry, you can see once again that it's really dried down and blended nicely into the layers underneath. So with that, let's start some further highlighting. Let's now go to Pure Evil Sun Scarlet. And again, we're not edge highlighting at this point. We're still focusing on those folds, but we're just being a little bit more selective, leaving the previous color in the recesses and really only focusing on those bits 
that are facing directly upwards with the Evil Sun Scarlet. The first sharp highlight we're going to do is a 50-50 mix of Evil Sun Scarlet and Wild Rider Red. And as you can see, we're going to focus this predominantly on the tops of the folds, so the height of the creases, and also along the edges of the cloak where we've got those sharp edges of fabric. This is a nice easy step and we can take our time with it. Make sure you haven't got too much on your brush and use the tip of the brush to work along the edges of the model and get that nice crisp highlight. The last highlight that we'll do is with Wild Rider Red and all we need to do is follow the areas we covered in the last highlight stage. However, one key difference is we want to make sure that the Wild Rider Red is inside the mix from the previous steps. This is a much finer highlight. Again, make sure you haven't got too much on your brush and you've got a really fine tip. Just work your way across the model looking for those absolute sharpest edges and sharpest folds and you can get a really nice effect. And that's the cloak done. I'm really happy with how it's come out. It's really bright and rich, but doesn't overpower the model. Uh, because we've got a lot to do just to get this nice and balanced. This next bit's going to be a lot of fun and we're going to paint Usheran's flesh. Now because we've got a black undercoat we want to just help the next colours along because as you can see the end result is quite bright. So I'm going to take some Stegadon scale green and I'm going to paint this all over Usheran's flesh. Now obviously we've got the body here, I've also got his head separately so I'm going to paint his head exactly the same way as I paint the body. Now this is looking quite dark, so I want to move on fairly quickly to start that greeny hue that we've got on the flesh. So I'm going to take Sons of Horus Green, and I'm going to paint this over all of the flesh. So over all of that Stegadon Scale Green. Now, if that Stegadon Scale Green is still wet, that's fine, because this will blend into it a little bit. But ultimately what we're aiming for is a nice even coat of Sons of Horus Green. So that will then be the base colour which we use to start to highlight up all of Usheron's flesh. The darkest colour will be the Sons of Horus Green. The first highlight is going to be a mix of two parts Sons of Horus Green and one part Iron Rack Skin, which is the base colour that we use for the Ideneth Deepkin. And what we're looking to do here is paint this over all of the areas that are facing upwards and the majority of the musculature on the model. We're also going to pay particular attention to the hands and the feet because if you look at the box art, they're much brighter than the rest of the flesh. So we want to start to build those layers up now so work your way across usher and what you'll find is that actually there's not a huge amount of flesh on display so you'll get through this bit fairly quickly just be nice and precise don't worry about spilling it on any of the metallic bits but do be careful around that red line cloth. like i said i'm going to be painting the head exactly the same way as the rest of the flesh the next highlight is a one-to-one -one mix of sons of horus green and iron rack skin and again, we're just going to focus on the musculature facing upwards. We're not worried too much about building texture yet. We just want to get this over the models. We're building up the layers. Again, focus on the feet and the hands because they're going to be brighter later on. And we're just looking to leave some of the previous colour in the recesses. This just builds a nice smoother transition for us. For the head, I am using a smaller brush because I do need to be a little bit more precise and there's more detail to lose as well. The flesh is really starting to pop a little bit now, so for the next highlight layer, it's going to be one part Sons of Horus Green to two parts Iron Rack Skin. So we're still keeping that greeny colour underneath, but we're really building the lightness. And again, we're focusing it on the tops of the muscles and the bits that are going to catch the most light. So just take your time and work your way across this. Remember to build up the feet and the hands as well. When it comes to the head, I'm really going to focus on building up some of the texture as well. So there's going to be more, a lot more dotting and lines across here to really build up the aged effect of his face rather than the smoother effects we're going to have on his arms and feet. That's most of the flesh done, so we need to build up some texture now, and the colour we're going to use this is pure iron rack skin. When it comes to areas along the arm and the leg, we just want to dot and dash and create some texture. So if you think about how muscles look and the musculature, and just we're going to put some striations across the skin. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to paint all of the feet and the hands 
so that it's completely iron rack skin now if you do get it into some of the recesses that's absolutely fine because we're going to do a little bit of glazing in a few steps time just to bring some of that sons of horus back but for now just focus on getting those areas nice and opaque and this paint doesn't cover particularly well which is why it's great for doing these highlights because it'll blend in nicely but you will need two or three coats on the hands and the feet when it comes to Usheran's face, we're going to use this pure iron rack skin very sparingly. We want to use it right on the extreme, so on those areas such as his brow, his nose, and the top of his mouth and cheekbones. Now I mentioned that we'd use some more Sons of Horus in a glaze consistency. I'm going to do that now just to bring some of the darkness back to some of these areas because it's looking a little too bright and the colour's a little too uniform for my liking. So making a glaze is very simple, it's just a very, very thin paint. So all I've done is put a little dollop of Sons of Horus Green onto my palette. I've then probably put the equivalent of three to four parts water into this paint, so it's very, very thin, it's very runny. The important thing to do when you're glazing, well, there's two important things. The first one is not to have too much paint on your brush. Always dab your brush on a paper towel before you go towards the model. So this takes most of the moisture out, leaving just paint in the bristles. The second thing is to move the brush in the direction where you want the darker colour, where you want the colour in your brush to settle. Because at the end of that paint stroke is where you're going to get the majority of the paint pigment. So for Usheran, I'm going to push the paint towards the back of his leg, so towards his backside. And I'm also going to paint this into the recesses to just rebuild some of that shading into those areas. Now because the glaze, it's very, very thin. So let the glaze dry before you go in with your next layer. You don't want to go too opaque, you just want to build it up nicely and you want to get some of that shading into those recesses around the veins and the musculature and the skeletal structure of the feet and the hands as well. For any areas where you've gone a little bit too heavily with that glaze, you can obviously go back to iron rack skin and just build that layer back up afterwards. And it's useful to do this because sometimes you can get it into those uh, recesses and it kind of stains the side of the join as opposed to just the absolute darkest recess which is what we're looking for we'll then build up the texture on those brighter areas like the hands and the feet and the color we're going to use for this is deepkin flesh so this is a nice bright off-white greeny gray kind of color i, I think it is 100 and sure uh, but what we're going to do with this is the same thing we did with iron rack flesh a couple of steps ago we just want to highlight the sharp areas, that things like the knuckles, the veins, the skeletal structure. We also just put like dot, dots and striations to really build up texture on the hands and the feet. So work your way across Usheran doing this. I'm not going to use this on his face. It's probably a little bit too bright and doesn't really tie in with how the box art looks. So keep it focused to the feet and the hands. We'll start to add in some of that damaged flesh now. So we're looking at things like Usheran's mouth, the top of his head where the bones are coming out. But firstly, we're going to look at the arms where we've got those bones coming out of his elbows. So what we've done is take a 50-50 mix of Pink Horror and Iron Rack Skin. And again, we've thinned this down to a glaze consistency. So probably three to four parts water. So remember, once you've got this mixed up, you'll have very thin paint. I'm using a very small brush for this as well. I say small, it's size one. So I'm going to put this in the paint and then I'm going to wipe it on a paper towel before I address the model. Then I'm going to paint it where I want the colour to start transitioning to where I want the transition to end, which is right at the top where the bone comes out of the arms. And this means that I'm going to deposit more pigment at the end. So do this once and see how it looks. And then if you need to add some more layers of glaze onto this, then you can do so. But just start that layer of glaze progressively further back until you're just really focusing on the sharpest parts. So it's right on the edge where that bone is protruding. When it comes to Usheran's face, we need to look at around his mouth and around that jaw area because that is the same kind of torn, fleshy, bruised, fleshy look that we're going for. And like I said, also those areas at the top where the bones are protruding from his head. To really lock in that bruised flesh right at the end, we're going to take a darker colour and take some scream of pink. Now again, this is a very powerful colour, so we want to thin it down quite a bit with water. So again, it's going to be a glaze consistency. It's going to be about three parts to four parts water with paint, and that'll depend on the consistency of your paint coming out of the pot. Tap the brush into the paint, then tap it on a paper towel, and just focus this right on the ends of that flesh. 
This will give you a really nice bruised effect. And we'll also do this on the head as well, where we've got the bone crown protruding. And this will give you a really nice transition. So it's really important because this is such a powerful color that we use it very thinly. So don't put too much on at once. Don't try and layer it up into an opaque layer. We still want to keep some of the characteristics of that Sons of Horus green underneath as well. Finally, to highlight part of Usheran's head, particularly where that crown is coming out and any other areas where we've got the darker scream of pink, we're just going to take that pink horror and iron rack skin mix that we had earlier. Now, if this has been on your palette a while, it will thicken back up a little bit so you can afford to go back in and just, again, tip of the brush, very little paint on it, and just drag it along the sharp folds of the model. If you need to put another mix up, it's just a one-to-one -one mix. We'll also use Screamer Pink to paint Usheran's tongue, and you can see here how powerful this colour is. It just covers in one coat really nice, and then we'll highlight that up again using the previous mix of a one-to-one -one mix of Iron Rack Skin and Pink Horror, which is nice and bright. So nice and easy, that's the tongue done in two very simple steps. Now, there are lots of bones on Usheran, so we're going to focus on his bone crown jutting out of his head, but we're going to paint all of the rest of the bone exactly the same. The first thing to do is get some more gas bone and use this to base all of these areas. Now, it's really important not to put this on too thickly. It can be quite tempting just to speed this bit up, but we do want to keep some of the detail because it's going to help us highlight a little bit later on. So take your time. Two layers should be fine, but you may need three in some areas. So remember, all of the bone is exactly the same, and we're also going to do all of the teeth as well. When that's dry, we'll shade it. Now, the colour we're going to use this is Agrax Earthshade. This can be a little bit powerful and can really settle into some of those recesses, so you just want to move it around and make sure that it doesn't do that. One thing I do want to do is, once that first layer is dry, I want to paint a second layer, really the bottom eight to a quarter of these bones, just to darken them up a little bit so that when we do highlight, it will look a little more pronounced. When that's completely dry, we'll then start to highlight all of the bones. So we're going to go back to more gas bone, and all we're looking to do is catch the sharp edges. Now, there's plenty of sharp edges to do this. So it's important you haven't got too much paint on your brush. I've probably got a little bit too much on mine, but we're just going to focus on dragging it along the sharp edges and joining them all up so we've got a nice structure. For the top, third maybe of the bone crown and all the bones coming out of his elbows we can paint them completely with more cast bone because we want them to be much brighter we'll do that in the next highlight step the last highlight we'll use is screaming skull now this is a much brighter bone color so we're going to do it very similar to the previous step where we're going to focus on catching the raised edges so we get some nice crisp highlights and we're going to work this towards the top of the bones and get a nice sharp looking tip to that bone crown as well so this is a nice and easy, straightforward step. Remember, we're also doing Usheran's teeth with this. So take your time. Make sure you've got a good tip on your brush. I painted Usheran's hair exactly the same way I painted the rest of the fur. So I quickly base coated it with black. And again, I used AK black, but you use whatever black that you've got. While I had the black paint out, I also based all of his claws. So these are the claws on his feet and his fingernails in that black colour. For the hair, I first highlighted all with Skaven Blight Dinge. And again, a very straightforward highlighting step, just making sure that we've got a little bit of paint on our brush and dragging it along the shape of the model. I then finished that with some Storm Vermin Fur, which gives me a nice warm grey look. So it tells you at some point this hair was alive, but right now it's just uh, a little bit musty, shall we say. For highlighting the claws and the fingernails, we use Stegadon Scale Green. And what we're looking to do is focus this on catching the sharp raised areas and just building some texture along the claws and the fingernails. We're not painting the whole area. We're just drawing nice lines and striations to create that texture. We'll finish that highlight using Thunderhawk Blue. Again, exactly the same kind of technique that we used throughout this model, but we're looking to really focus this on the sharpest edges and paint it inside of that staggered on scale green from the previous step. Next up, we'll paint the rope that Usheran has got holding on his loincloth and parts of his armour. So this is a nice, easy, straightforward step. The first thing we're going to do is base it all with dryad bark. So the real key thing here is to not spill this on any other areas that you've already finished. Just take your time building this up and working it across the model. You may be able to get away with one coat. You may need a second. 
To finish this, we'll highlight it using some Gawthor Brown. Now this is very straightforward. All we're looking to do is just catch the raised parts of this. So we're leaving the dried bark in the recesses and just very quickly painting along here to create that highlight. It's worth noting as well that the necklace or the chain that Usharan's got holding on his fur cloak is also a leather effect in terms of how it's all tied together. So we'll paint that the same way that we painted this. It's on to the metallics next, and this is perhaps the last major part of the model before we start thinking about putting them all together. We're going to wash them all with the same colour, so we'll start off just by basing them. All of the chainmail we're going to base with silver, so it's Circo Silver from Two Thin Coats. And we're also going to paint all of the flesh hooks that he's got across his body. And if you want to paint any other element silver, you can do that as well. Now, to differentiate the brassy copper colour with some of the traditional gold colours, I'm going to use Dragon's Gold from Two Thin Coats to paint some elements. We've got a couple of bracelets and we've got that chalice that he's got on his hip. So I'm going to paint those with this kind of more natural gold colour. For his armour, his shoulder pads and that brutal mace that he carries as well as some of the bracelets, we're going to use Balthazar Gold. Now with the Balthazar Gold, this is a fairly thin paint so you will need two layers but it's worth doing that and worth letting it just build up slowly so you get really nice coverage. As I said, we're going to wash all of this with the same colour and the colour that we're going to use is Nuln Oil. So we just want to take our time, particularly around those areas that we've already finished. And we also want to make sure we don't let this pool in the recesses too much. It's really, really important that we just cover it with a nice thin film. We want to work it into the recesses as well, especially with some of that chain mail and also the shadow areas along that mace. We'll highlight that gold using glistening gold from two thin coats. Now, we're not going to do this in a traditional way. We're just going to stab this into the gold area. So it just looks like it's worn and dated. And we're not going to worry too much about catching any particular edges to highlight it smoothly. Fairly stiff brush. It's a small brush. And we're going to use some Sycorax bronze. We're going to wipe most of it off so it's a little bit like a dry brush. We're then going to stab it across the shoulder pad areas. And this just builds a texture on it and helps them look a little bit battered. When it comes to that giant mace, we're going to do exactly the same thing, but we're just going to focus on the parts of it that are going to catch the most light. And obviously we're going to be working around the flesh at this point as well, so we do want to take our time and be a little bit careful. We'll then add a final, more refined highlight using Canoptec Alloy. This is a really nice colour that will highlight the bronze areas really nicely. And we're looking to create a sharp highlight with this, so we're looking to catch those edges. So again, make sure we haven't got too much paint on our brush. We just want to drag it across that edge. It'll give us a nice crisp highlight to finish off those brass areas. We'll add some rust onto the silver areas and the colour we're using that is Scrag Brown. Now again, this needs to be fairly thin. Not quite glaze consistency, but it still does seem to be fairly thin. So maybe two parts water to one part paint. Make sure you clean your brush off on a paper towel and then just work it into those recesses. And I'm focusing really on the lower areas, but I'm being very specific. I'm not actually painting the whole thing with rust. I just want to work it into some of those recesses. And that'll help it stand out quite nicely. Similarly, we want to add some verdigris across the copper and the colouring used for that is Nylac Oxide. Now this can be very powerful. So we just want to add a little bit and we want to build it up slowly as it dries. So in terms of areas I'm targeting for this, it's looking at recesses, it's looking at rivets and studs and bolts. And also where we've got dents in the armour, we're just going to pop some in there as well. And this, again, adds to the texture and the effect. To paint the blood effect inside that chalice, I just took some Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint, filled the chalice with it, and then just dotted it across the edge to give the same effect of the box art. I also dribbled some of it down the sides as well. To paint the gem on Usharan's head, as well as his ring and some of the other gems on the model, I based it with Corn Red. I then took some Evil Sun Scarlet and highlighted the main areas, leaving that corn red in the recesses. For the gem on his ring, I just highlighted the bottom half. I then added a further highlight with Fire Dragon Bright, just focusing on the edges. And for the ring, I just drew a nice crisp line around the bottom area. I finished up with a dot of Screaming Skull on the sharpest edge of the gem and also just along that bottom of the ring. So nice, easy, basic highlights here. To paint Usharan's eyes, firstly, I put a dot of Flash Gets Yellow into each one. When that was dry, I dotted the centre using Dawn Yellow, and this gave me a nice glowing yellow eye effect. Now, there are lots of dead heads in Usharan's cloak, so I'm going to show you how to paint one. 
you can paint them however you want. So all I'm doing is base coating this using Cadian Flesh Tone. When that was dry, I took some Pox Walker and washed this into the recesses. This is going to start to build up the dead effect on that flesh. I then highlighted the flesh using a 50-50 mix of Rakarth Flesh and Cadian Flesh Tone just to start to give me that desaturated skin effect. The final highlight on the flesh was pure Rakar flesh. They added some more detail using corn red for any tongues, and I used Ulthuan grey for any teeth. The last thing I did was start to get the base ready. I took some rattling grime contrast paint and painted this all over the earth style areas, where you've got that rubble, and it'll just flow into the recesses and leave the lighter areas highlighted, which is nice. So now it's time to put Usharan together and have a look. So there we have it, the ultimate guide to painting Usheran, the Mortak of Delusion for the Flesh Eater Courts. I've loved painting this model. I really hope you enjoyed this slightly more detailed painting guide. If you did, leave a like and a comment down below. And if you painted Usheran from this video, I'm sure you want to paint some of your other Flesh Eater Courts. Check out this video here. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.